So uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for your time in tuning in to hear about AMARC resources and our developing copper story. I think you're going to actually find uh, this one interesting. Our AMARC team is tremendously excited about what we've accomplished this year. It's been a truly transformative year for the company, and we're very much looking forward to a very active 2023 with a, a substantial amount of good news flow. So this is our standard cautionary and forward-looking uh, statement, which I'll let you read at some other point. So moving on and further to the uh, nice introduction we were just given, AMARC is a junior mineral um, exploration and development company. Uh, we're solely focused on developing the next generation of high value copper mines in BC out here in Western Canada. Over the last few years, our team has worked hard to acquire, assemble and develop a unique a portfolio of highly prospective copper porphyry gold districts in BC. And as many of you will know, uh, British Columbia is actually the heartland of copper production in Canada. Our districts include the Joy, the Duke and the Ike, and also a recent acquisition, a fourth district called the Hearn. These assets are 100% owned by AMARC, and we truly believe here at AMARC uh, that we are beginning to unlock the value of these districts to the benefit of both uh, potential transaction partners and our shareholder base, both current and future. Overall, our portfolio of assets presents um, a true optionality for our shareholders, um, but also the optionality exists at the district level. And why do I say this? Um, I say this because the uh, Joy, the Duke and the Ike these districts are large. They're between about 460 to just shy of 700 uh, square kilometers. And each one of those districts is focused on or centered on one or more uh, porphyry copper deposits. Porphyry copper deposits uh, for, for everybody out there who's listening in today are the primary source of copper globally and probably the most um, valuable uh, subset of this deposit group are the copper gold porphyries. Uh, this means that they're highly sought after not only by the big copper producers such as Tech uh, in British Columbia, but also the big gold producers such as Newmont. And actually the most recent acquisition in BC was made by Newmont and they made the, um, they bought out uh, GT Gold for the Tatoga deposit for north of $350 million. Uh, this was a great discovery. It was made by Charlie Gregg and his team. Uh, Charlie is actually one of our technical advisors in AMARC. So AMARC has actually entered into two non-dilutive uh, funding agreements uh, with producers on both of our Joy and Duke districts. Uh, the one we've been talking about uh, for the last year or so is on our Joy District. There, our funding partner is Freeport McMoran. It's one, Freeport are one of the largest copper producers internationally, and Freeport can earn up to a 70% interest on our Joy in our Joy District by expending 110 million dollars. Uh, they're a world-class producer looking for world-class assets. And uh, we're delighted to say this morning, we, we, the ink is still drying on the agreement, uh, but we got the news out this morning that we have a new partner on our Duke district, and it is the uh, Swedish International Mining and Smelting Group, Boliden. Uh, we're very pleased to uh, be partnering with them on Duke, and they have a similar deal on Duke as Freeport have on Joy, whereby uh, Boliden can earn up to a 70% interest in the Duke district, by um, spending $90 million. Very importantly for our shareholder base is that AMARC are the operators of uh, both of these uh, districts um, with Freeport and with Boliden. And this not only reflects well on our um, technical expertise, but it shows a great alignment uh, with these major producers in terms of health, safety, environment, uh, community and regulatory, et cetera, manners, uh, matters. So we're just going to move on now uh, to the next slide. And the intrinsic value of our portfolio of assets, of course, resides primarily in their geological characteristics. Uh, but this it also resides in the case of AMARC um, in the strength of our team. 
AMARC is backed by the Hunter Dickinson Group, um, who have discovered, developed, and successfully transacted a number of copper and gold projects uh, throughout British Columbia and indeed globally. And uh, a couple of our team, um, Bob Dickinson, who I'm sure you're all familiar with, and Mark Rabagliati, have been actually inducted into the Mining Hall of Fame in recognition of those uh, discovery and development stories. Also, Charlie Gregg, who I mentioned, he's one of our technical advisors. He led the successful team who discovered Tatoga that was recently bought by Newmont. So moving on, um, as I mentioned, AMARC is focused in British Columbia, and this is where uh, Hunter Dickinson was founded, where it's seen considerable success, particularly on the porphyry copper side. Uh, we have a series of legacy projects uh, throughout British Columbia through our Hunter Dickinson companies. But just to mention a few, um, our Joy project is in an area of northern BC called the Tutagon. It is adjacent to the Kames Mining District. That mining district, which is copper, gold, porphyries, was originally put together by the Hunter Dickinson Group. It was developed, uh, it was sold on, and the Kames mine has been mined out. The district is currently in the hands of Centera, who bought it from Arico a few years back for about $310 million. Uh, another Hunter Dickinson success was the development and the transaction of the Mount Milligan mine that was sold to Phelps Dodge some years ago for about 250 million. It is now being mined uh, by Santerra. Uh, Bob Dickinson, our executive chair, um, he also founded the Tosico company, which has become Tosico Mines. The primary asset in Tosico Mines is the Gibraltar mine. It's an 80,000 ton per day operation and is uh, Canada's second largest copper producer after Bali and Tech. So, you know, and the story goes on, but um, all of this significant BC, BC success and knowledge is being funneled and really concentrated into AMARC and driving our districts forward uh, to success. Uh, we have an advantage in uh, being in BC at the moment uh, with all the global uh, geopolitical risks, but we also have a great jurisdictional advantage with the depth and breadth of knowledge there is in our team. So we're going to go on now and have a quick look at our district, starting with Joy in the north of British Columbia. I'm not going to go through all of these slides in, in the name of time, but you can find the presentation online and uh, you know go through it at, at a slower pace at your own rate. So with Joy, we're located up in northern BC. Um, this is an interesting locality for two reasons. One is we've got very good power and road access into the area. Um, I'm sure many of our listeners today have heard of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC, which forms the northwest corner of the map we're looking at now. Um, what you may not know is that BC over many years was known as um, hosting moderate, but perfectly economic uh, porphyry copper deposits. But with discoveries in the Golden Triangle, like the, the Glore deposit, which is truly world-class, um, that, that has now changed the perception of British Columbia. And there's a lot of majors like Freeport, like Boleden, like Newmont, who are in here now, a new press from Australia, because we now know that British Columbia can host significantly higher grade porphyry coppers. And the reason I'm pointing this out is the rocks that host those uh, world-class deposits in northwestern British Columbia actually host the deposits um, in and around the Joy and the Kames mining district. So we've got great infrastructure, favorable rocks. And as I said before, we have Freeport MacMoran um, as partners on the projects. Uh, they can earn a 70% interest or up to a 70% interest by investing 110 million. They can earn an initial 60% interest by um, funding $35 million of expenditures and uh, an additional 10% to take them up to the 70% level uh, by expending an additional 75 million. Under the terms of the agreement uh, we have with Freeport, which was signed back in uh, May of 2021, uh, they had spent 9 million over the first two years. We're now heading into the range of 14 million. 
And we had a very successful season out on the Joy. Um, we have a very collaborative team approach uh, with the Freeport uh, that I think both teams enjoy very much. Um, and we completed this year 37 drill holes for just shy of 15 and a half thousand meters. And we did various extensive geophysical, geochemical and geological surveys. Now, there's gonna be a lot of news flow coming out of this. Uh, it's been a bit slower coming out than we would have wished. Like a lot of co companies, um, we're um, waiting for results from our laboratories. We did commence drilling in late June and uh, our results are just beginning to drip in. So as soon as they, they do come in, uh, we'll have them out uh, to all of our, our investors in a timely manner. But I just want to uh, mention a few words about the, the pine deposit. As I said, um, each one of these districts is centered on an own uh, deposit. In the case of Joy, it is the pine deposit. The overall ore forming system here within the Joy is um, with it around the pine deposit is six square kilometers. And the pine, known pine deposit within that today at the current time, as far as we know, it's uh, the pine deposit covers about 600 by 900 um, meters at surface. Uh, there's been historical drilling into this and we, we know that the pine deposit is a good solid BC copper gold porphyry grade in that we know there were intercepts of 147 meters at say 0.45% copper equivalent. To put that copper equivalency in, into actually perspective for our listeners, in BC uh, a copper equivalent cutoff may be about 0.15% copper equivalent, maybe heading up to 0.2% uh, copper equivalent depending on what deposit you're looking at. So you can see this is an economic grade for British Columbia. In 2021, we went in uh, with Freeport and we drilled the first two deep holes ever into this deposit. You can see they're labeled JP21007 and eight on the figure we're looking at. We proved that the deposit was open um, internally and also uh, to depths. Uh, one of the best intercepts we had was on hole seven. It was 102 meters at 0.56%. Uh, copper equivalent, so well above that cutoff grade for British Columbian porphyry copper deposits. We then, as um, we then stepped out with Freeport about half a kilometer to the northeast of the known deposit in the hole nine that you can see labeled there, the, the third long drill hole, and we drilled back towards the deposit and uh, we hit mineralization again, proving that the system was actually open laterally as well. So this system at the pine deposit is open internally, it's open to depth, it's open laterally. Um, in our drilling with Freeport this year, we put 11 holes into the deposit and the surrounding area. Uh, porphyry, porphyry deposits tend to occur in clusters. Uh, they're more rarely one deposit. So within this six square kilometer area, we could have two or three, de two or three deposits. So we're exploring the full five kilometer strike length of this target. And this on, um, this on Joy is only one of our target areas. We have several other five to six square kilometer target areas that host um, a whole pipeline of uh, porphyry uh, copper targets, deposit targets that we've started to explore with Freeport uh, this season. So there's going to be a lot of news coming out here from uh, the, uh, the, the joy um, as we progress through this year and into next year. So we're going to progress on now to the Duke and Hearn districts. Um, or we're located here about 80 kilometers um, uh, away from Smithers, the town of Smithers, which uh, resides to the southwest of the Duke and Hearn uh, districts. Uh, this is what's known in this area as the Babine uh, region. It is one of BC's most prolific uh, copper, gold, porphyry districts. Uh, it hosts the ex-producing mines of Naranda Mines, uh, the Bell and Grand Isle, actually in the bottom of the Bell Pit. Uh, there is still about 250 uh, million tons at 0.4% 
uh, copper and 0.2 grams per tonne gold. It also hosts the 200 million tonne uh, development stage project at Morrison. It has similar grades to, to Bell. Uh, this is a, a, a very productive area. It has a great infrastructure. To mention the Hearn first, and to be clear, the Hearn district lies outside of the deal with Boleden and Duke. This is a recent acquisition of AMOX. It's another great uh, copper gold porphyry district. We inherited uh, the data from some 160 drill holes and other surface data, uh, would you believe, in hard copy. So we spent the last couple of months digitizing that, uh, quality controlling the database, and we're now modeling the data. And there will be news flow in the nearest future coming out of Hearn. But the big news today, and I must admit it's been tremendous fun this morning, is the announcement of our deal with Boleden on our, our Duke property. Uh, the, the whole of the Duke tenure is not shown on this. It, it just the central uh, key um, Duke um, por porphyry copper deposit is shown. Just to give you a little bit more flavor about the uh, Duke deal with Boleden. They again, like Freeport, can earn up to a 70% interest in the district by expending a total of $90 million. They can, they can gain a 60% interest in the district um, by, by spending uh, $30 million. Um, Five million of that is actually uh, committed expenditures and um, then they can also earn another 10% interest, an additional 10% interest to take them to a total of 70% by expending 60 million uh, over the ensuing six years at, at a minimum rate of 10 million per year. Again, during the early years, uh, AMARC is going to be the operator on, on this project. So lots of uh, congratulations uh, coming in on, on that today, and uh, we'll be filling you in on due course about our plans for the Duke. But just to give you a bit of flavor of the Duke, it's centered, as I said, on the Duke deposit. Uh, this is the Duke deposit as it's outlined uh, by a geophysical method we use in porphyry exploration. Um, it's called uh, induced polarization. It outlines a sulfide system. Uh, not all sulfide systems are pregnant with copper. That would make geologists like myself job very, very easy if they were. But this one is actually pregnant with copper, moly, silver, and gold. And the system as we know it today is a robust system. It's three kilometers by one kilometer. What drew us into this deposit to start with was in 1971, there were a series of shallow drill holes, about 60 to 90 meters uh, drilled. You can see them here in the yellow dots. They intercepted um, what for British Columbia is all grade mineralization in terms of copper and moly all the way uh, down the holes. So you had um, in very good intercepts coming out uh, like 100 meters at 0.47%. Uh, copper equivalent. Uh, AMARC's gone in and we've drilled seven drill holes in this area over a restricted four by 600 meter area. Those are shown in the blue. We extended the deposit laterally and to depths of about 360 meters. Uh, like all true geologists, we then rolled the drill rig out to the north and we drilled that hole four you can see on the left hand side of your screen. It was a completely blind hole um, and we hit um, good grade copper and moly mineralization again. Uh, the next slide here, this just shows you the IP chargeability in, in wonderful colors. Um, everything in the yellows and all hotter colors to the pinks. Uh, this is um, the potential system. You can see at the southern end, we have only drilled a, a small proportion of this, uh, of, of this deposit. Uh, one of our plans here is to go in and explore this deposit more fully, hopefully drill off a resource and get it into preliminary economic uh, assessment. The next slide I want to show you, this is, um, is actually this one. This shows you the extent of our tenure. I'm not going to speak to this slide very much because of time constraints in this presentation. But this shows you the Duke deposit located in the center of our 700 or so 
uh, square kilometers. And throughout this tenure, we have a pipeline of deposit scale targets that we're going to prioritize for exploration uh, commencing uh, this summer with, with Bullied and our new partners. So I do just briefly want to mention the Ike district down here in Southern uh, BC. We're very excited about it. It is actually located in the heartland of copper production in British Columbia and hence Canada. It has excellent infrastructure in terms of power, road and rail. The road and rail go straight down to the port of Vancouver a couple of hours away. This again is a big district. It's about 460 square kilometers, but we're only going to focus on uh, two deposits here, the Ike and the Empress. So the Ike district is actually anchored on two uh, deposits. Uh, this shows you the uh, lay of the land for geologists who are watching. We're on the coastal Bhutanic complex on the, uh, uh, the interior margins of it. And you can see in the foreground outlined in that yellow and red uh, lines, this is our approximately nine square kilometer ore forming Ike system within the Ike district. Uh, this is the Ike deposit. We put 26 long drill holes into it. They're 800 meter long drill holes. We're wanting to drill that off to get it up to a resource status and do a PEA. But where we want to commence um, on the Ike deposit this coming summer is just to the north of the Ike there. You can see in the red highlighted the Empress and the Empress East deposits. These are what we call high grade replacement style deposits. They are driven by porphyries we're beginning to recognize, which are copper, gold, moly, and silver. Empress and Empress East them, it, themselves are high grade copper gold deposits. And they're within in about five kilometers from the Ike deposit itself. So what do we mean by high grade? Remembering what our cutoff grade uh, is in BC. Uh, what we mean by high grade here is we have in historical drilling, this is not AMARC's drilling, intervals of um, approximately 76 meters at 1.74% uh, copper equivalent. And you can see that's copper, gold, silver, moly. This is truly high grade. This is where we actually want to start next year. We want to go into this sub area of the district. And I know I'm running a little bit over time, but a kin will indulge me here. We're just going to look at one last cross section. This is a cross section from the Empress, the Empress East deposit. It covers two kilometers of strike length within a potential strike length for these deposit types of 15 kilometers, which still has to be fully explored. Uh, the Empress deposit you can see there, uh, there's room to expand it. This is where some of the very high copper gold grades are coming from. A kilometer to the east, we have the Empress East deposit, which is under drilled. And, and in the middle, um, creatively named, there is the Empress Gap area. It's about a kilometer. And you can see there's some really short drill holes there. These are percussion holes drilled by the likes of Quintana and Sumitomo in the 70s and 80s. What they did, they're about 40 meters deep. Uh, they drilled through the overburden just into the top of bedrock and they came back with copper and moly grades, which are similar to those that we find in the upper levels of Empress and Empress East. What they are saying with all the other historical and AMARC data is drill deeper, go out there and drill. And that's what we want to do uh, next year. We wanna go out and start drilling this high grade copper gold replacement area. We have a number of uh, funding mechanisms open to us to doing this. Uh, time will see where, where we actually land on that, but we expect uh, new, more news flow to come out of that. So just moving quickly on to our last slide here. And um, so what we have in AMARC is we have a phenomenal team. It's a really strong team. It's a privilege uh, to work with them. We have a great jurisdiction and a jurisdictional advantage in all of our history of successes and knowledge in that jurisdiction. We have the right commodity. We have copper backed by copper by gold. And we know that copper is arguably the most important uh, metal globally as we head into a net zero age. And we have a, we have a great portfolio. And we have um, good partners on board in Freeport and uh, now Belieden. So um, 
I, I'd like to invite you all. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation and I'd like to invite you all to, to join with AMARC and uh, to follow along with us as we develop this story. We are working in, in conjunction with King Communications team, but also I want to stress that myself and my executive chair, Bob Dickinson, we're very accessible to our shareholders and, and we're happy to talk to any of you at any time, answer your questions and uh, have a good discussion. So thank you very much for your time today. It's been uh, a privilege uh, to talk to you, uh, especially this morning with the news of the lead and breaking. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation, Diane. That was excellent. Um, we do have a couple questions here, and I do want to remind everybody that you can drop your questions in the Q&A, and we will try to get to them. Um, but for now, we have a couple questions here for Diane. Um, and the first is about the press release that was released this morning, because that was very exciting. And you mentioned it, you touched on it a few times, but maybe we could dive a little bit deeper uh, about the Duke Copper Gold District being advanced with funding from Boladine. Very exciting stuff. Could you maybe give us a few more details and some color on that and some information on the, on the Boladine group? Well, Boladin are, are an inter interesting company. They, they actually found their origins in uh, northern Sweden in a, a very well-known volcanogenic mass of sulfide belt called the Schkeleftio. Uh, their foundational asset back in the 1920s was the phenomenal Boladin deposit. Not only did it have uh, high grade in base metals, it ran over 15 grams per tonne gold. Uh, Boledon today have several mines in that district, particularly uh, the Christ Christina Barry and Cantbury and Renstrom mines. They also have a couple of mines in, um, in Finland and in northern Sweden up by the Arctic Circle. They have uh, the um, moderate grade, a very large ITIC deposit, which is copper, gold and silver. They also own and operate the Tara mine in Ireland, which is uh, Europe's largest zinc deposit. They're a smelting company as well. They have five smelters based in, um, in, in Norway, uh, sorry, in Sweden and in Finland. Uh, and they have had operations in the past and concerns as far afield as Chile, Spain, and actually also in the past BC. So, you know, in a way they're, they're coming back to BC, uh, possibly with a new team. Uh, we're very pleased to have them on board. Um, you know, it's going to be, um, you know, a, a great thing to be able to work with them on Duke. Uh, we're just heading into a whole load of technical meetings now. They're actually starting a little later today. And we hope to be able to be telling our shareholders pretty soon of our plans. But one of the things I forgot to say on the Duke deposit as we were running through, so thanks for the question, Jesse, is that on Duke, um, we can actually drill out there year round. Uh, it's accessible, so there'll be news flow hopefully coming out here over the winter as well, but watch that space and we'll get the news out to you uh, as soon as we can. Thank you very much for joining us today, Diane, and you have a great day. Thanks to Ken for organizing this. Uh, speak to you soon. Bye-bye.